Eveline de Grancy is looking for traces of the past. In Potsdam, the author looks around a prison once operated by the Stasi, East Germany's feared secret police. At the Memorial Museum, she learns how people were mistreated and demeaned by the communist regime. De Grancy was lucky not to have wound up behind bars herself. Here in the cell block of the Stasi prison, she sees what remains of this repressive regime. It's oppressive when you come in here, frightening. My heart even started to race. It made such an impact because I realized I could have ended up in here. Evelyn de Grancy escaped from what was then East Germany. Now the 68-year-old is at the Memorial Museum to tell her story. She summed it up in an autobiographical novel called Fire Under My Feet, the story of a traitor to her country. But de Grancy once loved her socialist homeland. She was an idealistic young woman. I believed socialism would triumph all over the world and that communism would replace socialism. And then there'd be freedom, equality and brotherhood everywhere. And that this could only happen in East Germany, in a socialist state. De Grancy was a passionate activist who strove to make her dreams of a socialist state come true. Out of an economy of scarcity and rationalization, she hoped to produce abundance for all. She married a fellow student named Norbert. His parents were high-ranking members of the Stasi, so the young couple enjoyed many perks, like a boat on the lake and a car. But Evelyn and Norbert also got to know East Germany's dark side and decided they didn't want to be corrupted by it. I have naturally lived I saw myself how people partied in the Stasi club. And through my father-in-law, I learned for the first time how the Stasi worked, how they would stop at nothing, how they spied on people, and how they would lock them away for just uttering a critical word. I experienced it with my first husband, who was constantly critical. He experienced all kinds of problems at work. The couple decided to flee to the west by crossing the Danube in an inflatable boat. Their dangerous escape to West Germany via Yugoslavia and Austria was successful. In the West, they were welcomed with open arms and received a lot of support, but the marriage didn't survive. Eveline found herself on her own in an unknown world. She began to play tennis and on the courts met Peter Hase. The well-read lawyer became her second husband, but Hase had chosen de Grancy, a teacher and a woman without a family, to provide him with the perfect cover. He worked for the Stasi as a double agent in the West. I have no explanation. I don't know. Sometimes I ask myself how I could be so blind. When will I learn to see things as they are? I just can't explain how it could have happened twice. That I became involved with secret services in both the East and the West. De Grancy eventually found out who Haza really was and wanted a divorce. But he refused and threatened her so she wouldn't blow his cover. It took years to divorce him. De Grancy's novel ends with the fall of the wall. I started to cry and couldn't stop. I was so moved. Suddenly a thought went through my head. Freedom. East Germany will collapse and you'll be able to go home. You'll be able to see your friends again. You'll be able to go back whenever you want. And there'll be no violence, no injustice. It's all over and you've survived. And I rejoiced and cried with everyone else. Evelyn de Grancy has finally found peace in her life. She's married again and now lives in Vienna. 
And this time, she's sure that her husband is just a retired architect and not a secret agent.